Hey guys. All right, it is week five of coronavirus, or if you're watching this video in the years after coronavirus, this is the uh, explanation video for how to do the dice game um, for exploring computer science. Uh, this is Northridge High School. I am your host, Mr. Okay, uh, today we are going to write a program that has two dice on it, and those two dice uh, will roll when the user clicks the space bar. So the user clicks the space bar, and it rolls two dice, and the numbers are going to be random, which is good, because that's kind of important with dice, um, is that there is some measure of randomness to it. Um, we have... Um, we're going to take that. We are going to, um, take the two dice, whatever the numbers spin out. Um, and then we are going to display the dice so that like, if one is a three and one is a four, then a three appears on the face and a four appears on this one. And then we're going to add them together and display the total for the user. Okay. Um, so if you want to work along with me today, um, our example program that we're going to do. Uh, is essentially going to almost just tell you how to do the whole thing, which is good. Um, but there's an extra credit aspect of this if you want to go for it, if you want to extend yourself and make it a little harder that you're going to be able to do. Okay. All right. So what I have is I have um, a scratch window open. Let me roll over to that. There we go. Okay. So I have a scratch window open for us. Um, I started a new project. Uh, I have my cat. This is just the default project. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to kill the cat. Okay. And we are this time, um, we're going to draw our own sprites. Okay. So I'm going to come here under the choose a sprite. I'm not going to click on it. I'm just going to highlight it. And I'm going to go up to the paintbrush. And this is a sprite that we're going to do, right? Okay. So I'm going to use this to draw shape and instead of outline, Oh wait, no, that's okay. We want it to fill. Uh, I'm going to do black and then I'm going to draw just a square about as squarey as I can get it. That's a pretty decent square right there. Okay, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Okay, now here's a trick um, that I want you guys to kind of be aware of. If we have our square here, right, and we want to make six-sided dice, the best thing would be to have every single side of our dice the exact same size. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to right-click on this and go duplicate, 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 duplicate duplicate. Now I have six squares that are all the exact same size. And, um, and I can go through and I can now put dots on the squares. So, um, you can do paintbrush, you can do whatever. I'm going to click on costume one, right? So costume one obviously is going to have how many dots? Wah, wah, right? One dot. Okay. So Here's a trick. So I can take my little paintbrush here and I can go like this and I can try to draw a good circle. And I'm a pretty decent computer artist and that is a terrible circle. What you can do is you can actually cheat. So that's with 10 pixels. So what if instead of 10, I go 100? Okay, now I have a dot. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to drop that dead center in the middle. That's going to be my one. Then I'm going to go to two. I'm going to change this to green. Okay, my two is going to be here and here. My three will do bright blue. And if you want, you can do all of these just the same color. I don't particularly care. Dot 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 so now I have a three 
Uh, four. Good magenta. Otherwise known as pink. We're going to go dot, 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 and dot. And then five, let's do, we haven't done yellow yet. Like that. And six, what color are we not done yet? Do orange. Yeah, orange will work. Six, we're going to do here, 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 and here. Okay. So now I have six dice that I can do here. Well, here's kind of the crazy thing. Um, well, let's not... Hold off on that. We're going to do, I'm going to teach you that trick later. Well, no. I'm going to teach it to you now. Okay. So what I have is if you look, right? So I have this. Now I have this, right? Um, problem is that it's too big. I'm going to make it 50%, right? So that's a good size right there. And then... I'm going to take this, I'm going to right click on this sprite, and I'm going to duplicate that sprite. So now I have two dice that look exactly the same. Look how easy that just made my life. Okay. If you really want your dice to be different, if you want them not to be the same, um, that's totally okay. I don't particularly care. It's just how you want to do it. Okay. Now, uh, part of the problem is that we have... Um, we have to have our dice generate, randomly generate what this is going to be. Fortunately, um, we are going to introduce two new concepts today. Well, actually three, really. Three new concepts today that you guys haven't done before. Um, the first one is variables. The second one is random number generation. And the third one is conditional statements. So... Uh, first up, variables. If you click on this little orange thing down here, you'll see that we have this right here. This is a new set of blocks that you guys haven't used before. Um, we are going to click on this little button right here that says make a variable. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to call my variable dice1. Okay, so we're going to have dice1, dice2. Okay, um, you'll have a couple of options right here. So you have for all sprites or for this sprite only. Don't ever use for this sprite only unless you know why you're doing it. Almost without fail, you want to always use for all sprites. Okay. So we now have a variable. I'm going to delete this other variable because I don't need it because we have our dice one. Okay. So a variable is like in algebra, in math, variable is a value that you don't know. Um... In programming, a variable is a container that holds a value. It doesn't mean you know it or don't know it. That's not really important. The variable is like the actual little cup that holds the value. So right now, our variable, right? If you look right here, our variable, dice1, holds a value of 0. Okay? So right now, this is our container. Our container is dice one. Our variable is dice one. The value is zero. Okay. What we want to do is when the space key is pressed, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so that you guys can see it better in the video. But when space key is pressed, we would like to take our variable and we're going to set it equal to a value. Okay. Now, in operators, there's a thing right here, and this is the one we're looking for. We're going to say pick random 1 to 10, 
except for I'm just going to say two for right now. Okay, so pick random one to two. So when our variable, when someone clicks the space key, our variable dice one is going to be set to a value either one or two. So if I hit the space key, you can see this dice one variable should change to either one or two. So two, 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 one. Wow, I got a little nervous there. Uh, so statistically, you know, there is a probability that there's going to be a whole bunch of twos in a row. That's not weird when we're only, you know, it's, that's this is basically flipping a coin, okay? So I have my two dice. Okay, now this one is going to pick a random number. It's going to put that number in here. Okay, so we have our variable, which is our container. We know how to do that now. We have our random number generator, which is picking a random number, and it is saving it in this variable. We have that now. Okay, what we are going to do is we are now going to do our third concept that we were learning today. Okay, and we're going to come here. And we're going to use something called an if statement. And in an if statement, what it does is it checks to see if something is true. And if something is true, then it does it. So I'm going to take this little equals one right here. And if you notice, the shape is kind of this diamond weird thing. It fits in that spot. So if something is equal to 50 right now, then it's going to do this. So in my variables, you'll notice that my dice one, there's a block in there that is shaped just like that. So I'm going to take dice one. I'm going to drop it into there. So now my question that I'm asking, if dice one is equal to 50, then do whatever is in here. Except for I'm not going to do 50. I'm going to do one. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. So I have two of these conditional statements. And I'm going to say if dice one equals two. Okay, so if dice one equals one, okay, then it's going to do whatever is in here. If dice two equals two, then it's going to do whatever is in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is looks switch costumes that's what we're going to put in here if dice one equals one then we want to switch to costume one if dice two equals two then we want it to switch to costume two i'm going to go back and just verify make sure so costume one is the one dot costume two is the two three four five and six okay so those are correct um sometimes you guys are kind of mess this up right here if you do mess that up, and if they get in the wrong order, you can actually just change the name right here. I would just change them one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to have them listed as costume. Okay, so now what I have is when space key pressed, it's going to set our variable called dice one to either one or two, okay? And then it's going to ask the question, if, dice one equals one, then do this. If it's not true, it's not gonna do it. It's just gonna skip to the next one. And now it's gonna say, if dice one equals two, then I'm going to switch costume to costume two. So now what we should see when I click on the space bar is this should change to one or two this dice should change to one or two dots. So here we go. And go. Two. Is that right? Yep. One. Two. One. Two. One. 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 Two. Okay. So that's working. We did good. Okay. All right. So that's how I get my dice to... Um, to roll okay um as far as animating it goes uh well we'll get to that in a minute okay so we have a problem so 
here is my Sprite 2. My Sprite 2 is not rolling, right? I'm going to take this code, I'm going to drag it over, and I'm just going to drop it into Sprite 2. So now if we look at Sprite 2, it also has that code. Okay. So that works, except it kind of doesn't work because dice one is a problem, is it not? They can't be the same. So each dice needs to have its own variable. So I'm going to take variable. We're going to go make a variable. I'm going to come up with the second variable and call it dice two like that. And then from my drop down, I'm going to make sure I'm in sprite two. I'm going to select dice two. And then I'm going to right click on this and change it to dice two and dice two. If I really wanted, I could just drag this out. Okay. So now we have dice one and dice two. I'm going to put this one over here like that. Okay. Um, and just so you guys know, so the display of your variables is this little checkbox right here. If you want to hide it, you can get hide it. You can show it. When our programs are done, I would unhide, I would unshow these. So that way they're hidden. So you don't see the values. Like you don't need those. This is just for testing. Okay. So now I'm going to hit my space bar. Uh, my space bar is going to generate a random number for each of the dice now. It's going to check the condition for each dice. And then it is going to display the face, the proper face for each dice. So I'm going to hit the space bar. Whoop. Hey. Whoop. Look at that. Finally, we got one of them the same. And then the same. Okay, so we did good. Okay, so um, what we have is we now have a functioning dice program that will roll between uh, one and two numbers. Uh, that's not actually good enough though, right? Um, you guys understand that. So to finish this, what I would wanna do is a couple of different things. First off, I'm going to have to go through and add some more if statements, right? So if dice two equals three, four, five, and six, right? That way it can add up all of them. I'm gonna to need to change this pick random to pick one to six, right? So that it can pick from all of the numbers available, okay? And then I'm gonna to have to have the costume swap to the right thing, okay? All right, so after I have that, then I have two dice that can roll one to six. Um, what I want you to do is take a third variable, make a variable, and we're going to call it total. Okay. I'm going to come here. And we're going to set total at the end of our dice two roll after it's done rolling, right? We're going to go set total two. Okay. And then if we go into operators, this is the math. We're going to set total. The value for total is we're going to take it and we're going to do dice one plus dice two. So now when I hit my space bar, it, the total should add those together. Three, that's right. Four, that's correct. Three, that's correct. Three. Four, three, two. All right, so my total's working. Okay, so now that I have this working, I want the display. So this is gonna show the total between the two dice. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna uncheck my two dice, right? Cause I don't really need that anymore. Okay, um, and so that is working well. That's what I want. Okay, um, I also would like, if you look at the rubric, here is the rubric. Let me blow it up just a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, I want you to have two animated dice. Use a random number generator for dice. Uh, variable stores dice values. Dice appear to roll. Okay, this is the one we haven't done yet. So I want the dice to roll. I want them to look like they're rolling. There is a myriad of ways that you can do that. It is not very hard. You can have them spin, you can have them bounce around the screen, you can have them do whatever um, whatever you want. What I will do on mine is I'm going to come in here under events, I'm going to do a repeat 10 times, 
like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna go looks looks. I'm just gonna do next costume. And then I'm gonna take a little weight. I'm gonna go weight point one. Point one seconds. So wait a tenth of a second. So now when I hit my thing, it should just randomly change this costume, right? So we go. Hey. So it looks like it's rolling. Um, I probably would also add some, you know, small spin to this, like maybe a rotate 15 degrees or something, and it would just kind of burp, 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 bounce around, look like it. Um, but that's kind of the artistic side of it. That's up to you guys. I will leave that to your better discretion, however you would like to do that. Okay? All right. Uh, this is where I habitually ask you if you have any questions, except for you're watching this in video. So... Uh, if you have any questions, um, please let me know, toss me an email, um, send me a message in canvas, uh, come on the stream. We stream every day from noon to two, pop on the stream and ask me for help. Um, whatever you want, just let me help you. Um, it, it's not a super difficult assignment this week. You guys have, um, just so that you know. Next week, I am going to assign you your final program, like your most your capstone program, basically. And then I'm going to give you uh, the rest of the year to kind of work on that. Um, it's a big one. And so it's okay. I'll give you plenty of time to work on it. Okay. But you should know enough after what we've done. You should know enough to be able to get the biggest uh, assignment done. Okay. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, to let me know. Uh, if not, best of luck and uh, do a good job and make it cool. Make something that you're proud of. Okay? All right. I will catch you guys next week.